Hello, everyone. Today, we will start the fourth revision, fourth free revision lecture uh, regarding to CAPS exam with some tips and tricks. Let us see the first question today, which is a 35 years old female with diabetes. Currently, she has been diagnosed with a urinary tract infection, which of the following antidiabetic drug interact with cotrimoxazole. Let us see firstly, what is the cotrimoxazole? It is sulfa methoxazole plus trimethoprim. Sulfa methoxazole plus trimethoprim. Okay. What is the problem here? With metformin or rosiglitazone or glipizide or canagliflozine. The problem here with glipizide, why? Glipizide is one of the sulfonyl urea. So here we have an interaction between sulfamethoxazole and sulfonyl urea. The concomitant use leads to enhanced hypoglycemic effect of sulfonyl urea. And this will give an additional hypoglycemic effect due to the inhibition metabolism of the uh, uh, glipizide and also displacement from protein binding site, leading to a very high level of glipizide and extra hypoglycemic effect. So we should not use sulfamethoxazole plus the glipizide or any sulfonyl urea. The second question regarding to apoptosis, what is the meaning of this word? Apoptosis happens in our body. It is a system that will Remove the dead cells. It is a programmed cell death. We'll control the removal of the dead cells from our body. One calculation problem here. A patient weighs 90 kilogram with normal renal function is injected with intravenous drug for 10 hours. Okay. The desired plasma concentration will be 22 milligram per deciliter. And the T half is one hour. So directly when we have a T half, we can calculate the K, which is 0 0.693 over one equal 0 0.693 hour minus one. And the volume of distribution is nine liter. So VD equal nine liter. Here he asks about the rate of infusion, the R. Okay, the unit of the R here by milligram per hour, milligram per hour. So how can we solve this question? As I mentioned previously, the formula is the first one to know. The formula here connecting those information is R equal CP multiplied by VD multiplied by the K. But we cannot use all those information directly. Why? We should check the units firstly. Is the unit of the concentration by milligram per deciliter. The weight is by milligram, so we have no problem here. The volume is by deciliter, and the volume of VD is by liter, so we should convert it into, lit into deciliter. It would be 90 deciliter. The unit of the time is hour. There is no problem with it. So directly multiply 22 by 90 by 0.693, you will get the answer, which will be 1372.14 milligram per hour. And next one. A 40 years old male has recently been diagnosed with a major depression and was prescribed a medication. Floxetine, 20 milligram once daily. Okay. He asks you the optimal response time for his medication. After which time he will get the full response or the maximum response. For the SSRI or most of the antidepressant drugs, it will take a time. So the answer here will be from six to eight weeks. The next one. It's an inglycol typically present uh, antifreeze a substance used as an antifreeze. If uh, it is ingested to the body, it will cause toxicity. The toxicity of it 
regarding to the toxic metabolite that form. What is the toxic metabolite of it? It is an alcohol. So after oxidation with the alcohol dehydrogenase, this is the enzyme that metabolizes the ethylene glycol. So it will convert it into aldehyde, then acid. This is the ethylene glycol. After oxidation in two steps, you will get the acid, which is, this is the oxalic acid. So the answer here would be oxalic acid. At what dose dopamine function as positive inotropic effect? We have three doses of dopamine, each of them having a specific function. The lower dose will act as a diuretic. The medium dose will act as a positive inotropic effect and the large dose as a vasoconstrictor. So here we need the medium dose of dopamine, which is five to 10 microgram per kg per minute. Those are the doses of dopamine, the three different doses. Then next one. If the rate of infusion of a drug is 750 milligram per six hour or every six hours, and the clearance rate is 8.3 liter per hour. What is the steady state concentration? Here to solve this, we have the formula. What is the formula? Saying that CSS equal R over total clearance. Okay, so that we should divide R over total clearance, but can we divide this directly? No, why? Because here we have every six hours and the rate of clearance every hour so that you should convert this into every hour, 750 every six hours. So how many milligrams every hour? This would be one, two, five milligrams per hour. So you should divide one, two, five over 8.3 to get 15 milligram per liter. The next one is a tricky question here. Hyperventilation is a condition that leads to, leads to what? Hyperventilation here is an increasing in breathing rate so that it will increase the exhalation of carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide level will decrease. And leading to what? An increase in pH. Okay, so the right answer regarding to those choices is number A, lower carbon dioxide concentration followed in rise in pH. Which of the following is the most common metaboli metabolizing design for clopidogrel? Clopidogrel, one of the pro drugs. It should be converted to its active metabolite in order to be active. The enzyme that doing that, it is cytochrome 2C19. Okay, so any drug affecting this 2C19 by inhibition or induction, it will affect the clopidogrel activity, like the interaction with omiprazole. Omiprazole, one of the PPI that inhibit this cytochrome. So what will happen? It will inhibit the conversion from clopidogram to its active form. Therefore, it will decrease the activity of clopidogram. Which of the following causes a decrease in renal calcium clearance or impaired calcium excretion? Okay. What does this mean? Decrease in renal calcium clearance or impaired of its excretion, this means that increasing reabsorption of calcium. Let us see the choices and check the right answer. Hypoparathyroidism, what will happen with hypoparathyroidism? Is it increasing calcium reabsorption or will not? It will not increase calcium reabsorption. The treatment with uh, chlorothiazide is one of the thiazide diuretics which affect the calcium level. 
it will increase the reabsorption of calcium. While furosemide will not, will excrete calcium. The extracellular fluid expansion also will not affect calcium and hypermagnesemia also will not affect calcium excretion. The last question today, verapamil metabolism should be considered while taking which drug? Okay, so the interaction with uh, verapamil happened with which of those? Aprepitant, erbizofen, carbamazepine, or ipratropium. It will happen with carbamazepine because carbamazepine is an inducer to the enzyme that metabolizes verapamil. So that in decreasing leads to decreasing verapamil concentration or level. Okay, this was the last question today. Also, here we have a list of drugs that have an active metabolite, uh, some important drugs like uh, amitriptyline, uh, buspirone, codeine, dexepramine, dextrometrophen or uh, dextropoxifen, uh, deltiazine, uh, imipramine, isopart dinitrate, meperidine, metoprolol, propranolol, naloxone, morphine, pentoxifelin, and verapamine, all of them having an active metabolite. Okay, finally, I would like to thank you so much for your attendance today. I hope it was a useful, uh, a useful uh, revision. And for the reservation of the full package of the revision, please visit our website, www.newptech.com. Thank you so much and see you in the coming division. Goodbye.